in um, our organization is to promote, um, as you know, uh, women in politics, but also to promote um, men who also uh, promote women's issues as well. Uh, we hope this is a good introduction uh, for those who are first running uh, to uh, um, running for office, and we hope that this evening will provide you with a, sort of a starter of um, how to run campaigns and how to get going. We do have mentorship programs, so if you'll need that, um, just let us know. Uh, and we, anything that we can do to support you, we have people who um, help uh, uh, volunteer for campaigns and things like that. So we just want to help you in any way that we can to help you run your campaigns. Um, our next event is going to be the endorsement night. And I believe we've started sending out questionnaires. We have picked races, mainly the big races like city council races and things like that. So for people who are running in those type of races, we will be sending you questionnaires. If you haven't got one in the last, you know, by the end of this week, please uh, let, let us know. Uh, our endorsement night, our fundraiser and then our endorsement night is on September 9th at the Falkirk Mansion. Uh, after that, we do have a couple of other events. We have, uh, in November, we have an election wrap up, and then in December, we have a uh, holiday party for everybody, just sort of celebrate the year. So that's this is what we do, and this is one of our, what we feel is one of the best things that we could provide our members and candidates and uh, hopefully give them as much information as we can. Uh, does everybody have a program? Uh, if, you, if you need a program, can you raise your hand? And, okay. Um, let's see. Frida, would you mind? Uh, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Frida. Frida Zolan. It's one of our hardworking uh, people on our program committee and also on our endorsement committee. So if you could raise your hand if you don't have a program, that'll just help uh, give you an idea of what it is that we are, or what our uh, program is for this evening. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot. Um, uh, I'd like to introduce Dottie Lemieux, who will be giving us the nuts and bolts of local, of local candidates. So Dottie? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm, I'm Dottie Lemieux. I'm a campaign consultant in Marin County and work actually all over the state. This is my able assistant and technician, Ray Morris. I guess I can't do much. I, I can do it. <laughs> and I run Green Dog Campaigns. Lee Stanley is going to be speaking about websites and so forth. Also um, works with Green Dog Campaigns. So I'm going to talk about how you can run and win for elective office. How many people here are candidates? And how many of you are first time candidates? Okay, we have quite a number. And we're in. Yeah. Okay. So you've run for something else elsewhere. Okay. Great. Okay, so congratulations. You're running. Now what? <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it really short so you can ask questions because there's a lot to go through and I, can, I don't have enough time to really give you all the nuts and bolts, but these are a few serious nuts and bolts that you need to do. Raise money is the number one. Holds the whole thing together. You don't want those corroded bolts like they have on uh, Bay Bridge when you're raising money for your campaign. You want to make sure you have some money in your coffers, even if you're running for a low-key kind of race, like the sewer board, you act, you actually need to raise money because you're going to be printing up some materials, you'll be having a website, you'll be walking door to door handing things out, so raise money, raise money, raise money, and we have somebody coming next who's going to talk about that um, in depth. Hire consultants. Some of you may be running for a school board or some smaller race, and you, you may not have the money or you may not think that you need a consultant, but I found that it's really helpful even on smaller races 
if you have somebody with kind of an overview and that can help you with your messaging, help you targeting voters, has an idea, has done this before and knows how to get the job done. So do consider hiring a consultant. There are a number of, a lesson we're in and a number of us all over the place. A treasurer is something you absolutely need. Make sure that your filing is done correctly, you have PPC reports, and keeps track of the money so that you don't have to spend your time keeping track of that money that comes in, making sure that people are going over the limit that they're supposed to keep. For, so some races have individual limits. So you want, to, you want somebody that knows what they're doing to be a treasurer. Uh, you want a campaign uh, and, and or volunteer coordinator. It's sort of a campaign manager, and in the larger races, this could be a full-time position of somebody that's going to be with you 24-7, making sure that you know where you're supposed to be, you're talking to the voters, you're making your phone calls, you're getting things done, and they're <coughs> sort of the buffer, too, between you and the crazy people out there. There are a number of them. And, and you, you might have a separate volunteer coordinator, but that could be the same person in a smaller race. That, that person would help you make Sure, you have your volunteers, and they know what they're supposed to do, make phone calls, stuff envelopes, lock precincts, and, and keeping track of them. And you want a good database with those volunteers so that you know who's volunteered, who's a likely volunteer, what they want to do, and what you think you can get them to do. So the volunteers, you're going to find these in your friends and family. You're going to find them in people who have volunteered for other campaigns similar to yours. Uh, these are two separate things, a kitchen cabinet, which are volunteers, but these are also people who know the issues really well or know certain aspects of the campaign really well, and they're your trusted advisors. So you're going to sit down with them frequently to talk about what, what's going on out there. Um, but they're also volunteers, and they'll probably double up, and they'll probably walk precincts for you and all that other stuff. And you want to make sure you have a theme and a good message to take to the voters. So you need to know what your issues are and kind of have a theme going for yourself. So next. Congratulations, you're running yeah. backs backwards. Okay, this is just a chart. The person, Annie Egan, is going to talk to us about fundraising. This just gives you an idea. You start with yourself, raising money. Can you put money in your race? You go to your personal contacts, your friends and families. Uh, your ideological people that believe like you do, people that don't like the other guy, and the people in the power circle are kind of the last because they want to be where the power is, and when you look like you might be going to win, they're going to come over and give you money. So that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Hiring a consultant. <clears throat> do you need one? <clears throat> May I get talk about that? Um, you want to know what else they've done? Have they done races like yours? What's their win-loss ratio? So you want to make sure you get somebody that's got a fairly decent win-loss ratio. Uh, what do they bring to the table? What can they offer? They have some, some of them have good lists of, of people that you can go to for money. They certainly have experience. They can sometimes do ge there's general consultants who will help you overall. Then there's specific consultants that do mail, media, polling, that kind of thing. But I'm mostly talking about the overall ones that kind of help you coordinate all that stuff. How much do they charge? Where do they fit in your budget? And you can negotiate. And what do they know that you don't, which is probably everything if you're a first-time candidate. <laughs> so your message. Very important to have a good message and a simple one. The old KISS, keep it simple, stupid. You want to know what the key issues are in your race or your district or whatever you're running for. There's going to be a few key issues. And you want to differentiate yourself on those issues from the other person that, that you're running against. How will you address them? So figure out you know, how you're going to talk about them. And try not to have more than three or four, if you absolutely must, in the material that you send out. Use bullet points. I have down here in graphics. So make sure that something that you send in the mail is a lot of white space and pictures. and It's not just long paragraphs about what you're going to do, because people won't read it. But you want to talk about yourself a little bit, why you're qualified for this job, what have you done, and what you're going to do. So maybe a few bullet points on both of those. And be consistent. You want to have, make sure that you're giving the same message to all the groups that you meet with and all the individuals that you meet with. 
Um, you might want to say slightly different to different types of people because you might be having a building a coalition of different types of people. And so you want to kind of know who's out there and how you're talking to them. But you don't want to say anything that's going to come back and you said X to this table and Y to this table and there's a reporter at that table who's going to report you in a paper tomorrow. So, and always know that you're on stage no matter who you're talking to. Next. <laughs> okay, who are you talking to? There are a number of different <coughs> categories of voters. There, first of all, there's the vote by mail people. More and more of us are vote by mail people. How many of you get an absentee ballot? Permanent absentees, I'm <coughs> one. Yeah, more and more of us. I think it's, it's over 60% now. And some of them vote early, not as many anymore. A lot of these people actually vote later. They hold on to their ballots. But you want to get your message out early, especially to older people, because they are the ones that are more likely to vote early. And if they see your material, they'll remember you. Seniors, sometimes you want to have something particular to say to seniors about maybe keeping costs down, keeping the services up that are important to them. So you might want to think about doing a special senior piece. And then there's youth. You want to get what their needs are. What do they want? Is it are you ready for college board? You certainly need to be talking to the youth voters as well as their parents and everybody else in the community because those people are going to be the future and you want to get them to come to see your point of view. So you want to know what, you want to talk to them. It's more important now. I think we've got more young people involved and that's great. <clears throat> ethnic minorities. What special needs are there in your community? If you have a lot of ethnic minorities in your district, and some of the things will be bilingual. You might want to put your ballot statement in Spanish. You might want to do bilingual mailing if you are in a district that has a large population. And check your voting um, statistics before that to make sure that it's worth um, spending the money because there are still a lot of ethnic minorities that don't vote. I, I always tell people to get out and register people because there are a lot of people in Marin County, Hispanic people, um, who, who don't vote, but are citizens and actually can vote. So we need to be tapping them. Housing is always a big issue. And I think this cycle, housing is going to be a big issue for everybody. Geographic area. You might want to have a look at the different geographic areas that you're addressing. If you're running for city council or supervisor especially, some places are going to have potholes that they, they're concerned about, the developments that are going in their community schools, there's always going to be something specific to every part of the community. So just be aware of it. And when you go to coffees and things with those neighbors, you want to bring up their issues. Homeowners and renters may have two separate issues. Um, homeowners may be very concerned about taxes. And renters um, may be concerned that the rents are really going sky high. And maybe you want to say something to them about how you might address that issue. I just threw those up there or something. Here's a few examples. Um, these are some mailers that we did for Shirley Zane, who's a supervisor in Sonoma County. We sent this one out to the early voters, and we, we just highlighted her name to get it out there. And we did a sample ballot, and we put a big thing around it. And then we put her, her bullet points over here on the back. Next is, um, for seniors, we did something kind of nostalgic. Uh, we showed kids, and it says, remember when uh, your kids could play in the street. Neighbors watched for, out for each other. You knew your local grocer, that kind of thing. And just to kind of tap into the, those, that population. And then we showed her with a couple of seniors from one of the mobile home communities, which, which is a big voting block in uh, Sonoma County. And she used to be a, the head of the senior center in Sonoma. So for her, it was very natural base to, to tap into. This is a different kind of a uh, flyer. This is a testimonial. It has some um, uh, key endorsements, Sierra Club, the, um, the firefighters over here. She has some great looking firefighters. Great. And <laughs> they're really cute. Uh, sheriffs. And then just a, vo a real voter, really at her door. Um, and, and so it's a really, uh, the family with the kid. So it's a, it touches people, they understand, they, they relate to that. So we try, to, we try to do as much of that as we can. Okay, sometimes you have to go a little bit negative. You have to out the opposition, especially if you're running against an incumbent. 
you may need to tell people what is wrong with what the job that that person is doing and why they should fire that person and hire you. Because this is a marathon job interview that you're on to convince the voters to hire you for that job. If there's somebody already sitting in it, you've got to tell them why they shouldn't be there. So a good, what I call good, bad, and truly ugly, um, the good negative camp campaign pieces use, uh, well, they use humor. They're funny. They're truthful. They're relevant to the campaign that you're raising. They're not personal. They're well documented. Anything that you're going to say about somebody, you want to make sure you document it. And they're timely, which means they, they come out, you don't hit them at the last second. I think that's a little below the belt. I've seen some really bad ones like that. Sort of a not so good negatives or personal. There's no documentation. They're not relevant to the campaign. And truly ugly are ones that are false, misrepresentational, really nasty. And there's been a few of those in Marin County over the years. So you really want to stay away from anything like that. This is uh, Susan Adams. Is she still here? Oh, no, she, she left. OK. This is our 2010 supervisorial re-election campaign. This was, we used humor in a kind of a negative, it was a more of a comparison piece. It's running against Carrie Mazzoni, who was a former assemblywoman. And, and um, we just did this play on her name and baloney, because she was saying a lot of things about Susan that were just not true. So we put this up here, it caught people's attention, and then on the inside, um, we just we gave the facts. So if, if they opened it up, they would, this is a little wordy, but we felt that we needed to have all the information laid out with a good graphic on the front so that they'd open it and read it, and she won that campaign. So other ways of delivering your message, electronic media, TV, radio, web ads, are all ways of reaching the voters. And if you use uh, cable, it's pretty inexpensive. You can target who you're, who you're um, reaching to through the kind of TV shows they watch. Social media, you have to do it now. I, I don't think it's a huge um, component yet. I think it's still in its infancy. But you do have to have a Facebook page, have a Twitter account, um, use your Instagrams, use all those social media. If you have enough money to get somebody to help you with that, if you're not familiar with it, then, then it's worth doing. You certainly absolutely need a website, and you need to keep it up to date, and you need it to be clear and have pictures. And you could get longer in your website. You can have white papers and things in your website, because people that really want to learn more about you and the campaign will read them, and other people don't have to read them. You're going to go door to door and hand out pamphlets and try to talk to people as many as you can or your volunteers can. It's the best way you can have a, a conversation with the voters actually meeting them. Phone banks, calling the voters, giving them your quick message. Uh, sometimes we use robocalls. And sometimes we've used these in, in campaigns where the uh, uh, candidate didn't have much money because they're really cheap. People hate them, but they actually work. If, you, if they're done correctly, and that is a 30-second pitch in the candidate's own voice. And you always say, I'm so sorry to disturb you at dinner uh, when you first start talking. Because that's what you're doing. Uh, print news ads are not used as much anymore, but they still are. People put ads in the Pacific Sun, not as much in the IJ as they used to. Yard signs. Yard signs are kind of at the bottom here, because if you don't have a lot of money, don't spend them on signs. And think the next slide addresses those, that's why we will. Um, endorsements, everybody thinks getting a lot of endorsements is really important. It's not as important as you think. Your message has to come first. If you don't have anything to say, then a long list of endorsements makes no difference because people really want to know what you have to say. And you have to say it in a clever way. Some are more key to your race. If you're running for a certain race and there are other people that are in those seats, or other people that are in other seats similar to them, that they're good endorsements, like elected officials. But beware, there is an anti-government sentiment out there. And that's something to think about. It's kind of different now than it was when we started this. Community leaders, heads of organizations, local commissioners, uh, planning commissions, and parks and rec, and that kind of thing. And organizations, unions, business groups, environmental groups, women's groups, like this. And Chambers of Commerce, if you're 
more business oriented. Um, and there's some national groups that endorse in local races, uh, especially now, National Organization for Women, NWPC, National Women's Political Caucus, a CTA California Teacher, they're California, but they're also American Teacher Federation, and then there's the, the California Nurses. Am I going over time? And this organization. I, I, yeah, I said women's groups. Yeah, okay. like this one. Yes. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, here's the yard sign. This is from the Obama campaign. They sent this out to all of their volunteers. On the yard sign, I can't vote. <laughs> Go knock doors. They were trying, a lot of volunteers were saying, we need yard signs. Where are the yard signs? And so they said, forget the yard signs. It's more important than you knock on the doors. And that is true. So yard signs, if you have bunches of money, but they can't vote. So get your, use your money for messaging and buy signs only if you have enough money in the budget ahead of time for it, because you have to order and stuff. Precinct walking in smaller races is absolutely crucial because it may be one of the main ways that you get, you may only be able to do one or two mailers, and if you're at the door and people get something dropped on their door, even if it's the same thing they get in the mail, the fact that somebody knocked on their door means something. Make sure you have a good voter list. You want frequent voters in your race, not just everybody that's registered because they're not going to be um, voting. You need that volunteer coordinator that we mentioned to get your volunteers out. Um, frequent voter list, the same thing. A short handout and praise and always thank your volunteers. The people that are out walking for you, praise and thank them. Give them treats. What's the best source of a frequent voter list? Well, we use a, a, a vendor called Political Data Inc. <laughs> and you can buy a list. But uh, if you have a really great computer person, they can take the list from the county and massage it. Because all the information is in the list from the county. Political Data Inc. though has uh, homeowners broken out, which is they use other lists. So uh, that's a good service if you it's important in your way. When you have phone banking, the same thing. You need a good list of volunteers, a good frequent voter list, somebody to coordinate, make sure that people show up. And you can use cell phones now, which is great because we used to have to find a place with a whole bunch of phones in it. And now you can just have people sitting around this table. I bet everybody has a cell phone. So you can just get people together and call people. Praise and thank your volunteers. Give them something to eat. Pizza. I always like the pizza. OK, how am I doing on time? Um, it's a little after seven. OK. We started a little late. But OK, we're almost done. The GOTV, get out the vote. The, if you get all these people, and your whole goal of all this precinct walking and phone calling and mailing and everything is to get a list of the people that are going to vote for you. So on your voter list, you're going to mark who said they were going to vote for you. For you, And you want to take those lists. And the last week, maybe weekend, you're going to go out and try to identify those voters. And it, it is something else you can do, too. Since so many people do vote early absentee, you can get from the Registrar of Voters the list of people who have voted. $15, I think they charge. They send you an email. You take those people off your list. So when you're doing your GOTV, you're not calling people that already voted and wasting your time. And so you keep good lists of your voters you call to remind them. You check the polling places on election day with a few volunteers and see who's voted and who hasn't voted and get those people to the poll. You, you should call to remind them. Um, I've worked at some campaigns where they do not get dragged. They go to the people's door, they knock on the door, they say, you haven't voted yet, come on. <laughs> And so you have to have a good personality to do that. <laughs> Some miscellaneous things, dealing with the press, you want to have a good relationship with the press, don't keep them waiting if they call you. Um, you don't have to talk to them that second, but you do want to call them back, because you don't want the, the um, quote in the paper to be that you are unavailable for comment if you have something to say. There may be times when you want to be unavailable, but try to, try to keep your, your dealings with the press at least somewhat <coughs> amicable. Letters to the editor. Use your volunteers to write letters to the editor or have one person who's sort of a scribe who writes letters and gets a bunch of people to sign them because people read that part of the paper. Um, your debates and your elevator speech. Your debates uh, will be like you're having here in, in our MWPAC. We'll have people from all the races talking, not exactly debating, but giving, giving forums, giving their, their points of view. 
to town halls and community forums. There may be others that there'll be a lot of these going on in the next couple of months. And endorsement nights and questionnaires. You'll be getting questionnaires from a lot of different people. There may be some people, some organizations you're not interested in getting their endorsement. But if you even if you get those people and you say, I don't want to be endorsed by the NRA, say something to them, you know, just tell them, acknowledge that you've got their questionnaire by the thank you for nothing. And here's some resources for women in politics. Uh, she should run.org is a national organization. Close the gap cal.org cal is a California organization. They are um, they're a really great group that's fairly new with Mary Hughes as a longtime consultant. Um, it, it did the 2012 project. They are really looking for people to run for higher office assembly and senate. Um, the next couple of cycles. So if you're thinking about higher office in the next few years, they're the people to talk to. There's a political institute for women that has a California chapter, emerge.org. I know some of you have, take, have taken the Emerge course. It's an excellent course for potential candidates. Then there's Emily's list, which is a little hard to crack, but and now NARAL, National um, Association of is it? It's abortion rights. Our oh, national abortion rights. Something like that. <laughs> Actually, thank you. <laughs> and NWPC, which is a national organization, we we used to be associated with them when we become independent, but they're still out there. They still endorse candidates. And this is me, um, Green Dog Campaigns. I have some materials over on that table, uh, some articles that I've written about campaigning. I have some examples of, of stuff that we've done here. I can't let them go, but people want to look at them, you can. And I don't have um, handouts of the thing here, but if you would like to have a copy of it, I'll email it to you. So just let me know, and I'll email you the whole slideshow. Okay? And I guess we don't have time for questions, unless there's just one or two. You're so overwhelmed, you can't speak. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next presenter is uh, Annie Egan of Annie Egan Consulting, and she'll be discussing Fundraising 101. Annie? Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I sometimes do this with um, slides, and um, and I uh, thought what I would do is uh, rely upon um, the latter part of my presentation, which is a little role play with call time, because I think that call time, fundraising call time, is one of the most important parts of fundraising. And I think it really funnels into all arms of fundraising, which is events and uh, your online face, which is Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, which is, you know, uh, and Flickr, <laughs> which are all growing parts of uh, campaigning. And, um, but really it's, um, I believe the most important fundamental is uh, call time. And so I kind of focus on that the most when I'm talking to uh, women and, and men, my clients, about uh, uh, the fundraising fundamentals. But so what I thought I'd do with you today is talk about how fundraising um, is anchored, or how uh, campaigns are anchored in fundraising, and then talk about the fundraising fundamentals, and then talk about call time. So uh, really campaigns always begin, fundraising is first, and so fundraisers will often be called in the beginning uh, by a campaign, and that is what uh, a candidate will start with. And uh, I'm really in the beginning of uh, the 2013-2014 cycle, and uh, right now with a lot of my clients, and we're focusing right now just on money and endorsements. Endorsements and money, money and endorsements, endorsements and money. And um, <coughs> so I, d I tell my clients I don't really want you thinking about anything else. And um, I have 
you know, I and I tell tell my assistant, I want you to look at the opposition. I want you to monitor that for me, but I try to discipline myself as well, and so I try to focus on uh, for my client on the same thing, endorsements and money, money and endorsements, and I schedule things in our timeline that allow us to focus on those two things, and that means fundraising events. And we drill down on our base. Uh, so if I have a client from Marin who is an environmental leader, uh, we schedule events with environmental leaders or and business leaders. If this woman is an environmental leader from the chamber, I'll schedule an environmental event with uh, chamber leaders. And uh, whenever someone's a leader in the chamber, I always invite the trades because they go hand in hand, right, Paul Cullen? Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of how I do those things. And I really believe in uh, events to get to those two things in. So um, that's kind of the, and then just to go into the fundamentals of fundraising, I really believe in the power of personal contact um, and uh, reaching out to, as I say, your base and your friends. Uh, and when in doubt, be honest. Well, you know, when people say, geez, why are you running? Or Susie, you know, geez, this other guy's out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to City Hall to represent the values that we both share. And I need the benefit of your investment. You know, will you make a donation? Will you endorse me? You know, just be honest. And, and people want that sincerity from you. Because you're your, your own best advocate. And you're the only one who can advocate for you. Um, and I've run into so many people who are unable to do that uh, for themselves, and they want to uh, they want to delegate that to other people. And it doesn't work. Um, why you? Why should you be the one? If you can't answer that question, um, you should spend some time. And that's call time is a great way to practice uh, that answer. Uh, to different communities and to your friends. Your friends are a great way to practice. That's your base, your love money, we call it. Um, and know your audience, know who you're talking to. Pay them the respect of knowing their issues before you pick up the phone. Uh, people will uh, res like that, they'll respect you for it. And also make the ask. If people take you seriously, if you make an ask for money, and they think, oh, she's, she's the real deal, you know. And always say thank you. Thank you for your time, even if they say no. Well, may we keep in contact, or thank you so much for your time. Um, so, uh, and don't be afraid to reach out. You know, I always say the power of personal contact. People want to hear from you. And people will say, well, geez, I heard from Susie. Did you hear from Susie? I heard from Susie. She, she asked me for money. She asked you for money. You know, so people will start talking about you, and a buzz will be generated. And then they'll get the email from you. And then you got the email from her. And then, you know, what's the competitor getting? You know? So, um, and while all, when you're consistently making these calls, 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 your campaign is generating the emails, the Facebook messages, the Twitter messages that represents your campaign message, who you are. You're an environmental leader, you're a business leader, you know, so they're, they, in conjunction with you, are deciding the tempo and the method of which and how you want to communicate your campaign message while you are calling, 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 calling. Um, but it's not simply not enough just to, you know, blast something out. Yeah. Um, so I've spoken a little bit about advocating for yourself um, and knowing why you are the best person and um, and knowing your audience. I always really uh, no cookie cutter conversations. You know, um, and that's that's really implicit in the knowing your audience. Um, so every time you pick up the phone, I say to a client, "So what's the goal of this call?" And 
Uh, we want to have as much, we want to get out much out of this conversation as possible. Because so many times, you know, we hang up the phone and, well, I'll get, I'll ask him next time. Oh my God. You know, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, you know. So, what is the ask? Do we want a straight donation? Do we want a straight donation and an endorsement? Do we want a party? Do we want a meet and greet? Is it too early for the fundraiser? You know, do we want, of course, it's never too early for me, so. But, you know, what? so what do we want from this person? And what role does this person play in the community? And what would be the ideal situation? Um, can other, can this person recommend others that could give? Uh, that's always great. Um, and of course, endorsing. Um, fundraising myths. Uh, a donation is only money. No, no, no. It's an investment in you. You know, it's an investment. And I think that's why fundraising is so scary for a lot of people. Because they understand that it is an investment and it is an ask in, in you, you know. And, um, but it's, a, it's an honor to have someone's uh, donation. Um, I can raise all the money online and, you know, other people will raise it for me, you know, um, and all of my money will come from small contributions. Um, now, this is interesting because different municipalities, as you know, have different rules. So sometimes, you know, I think in Marin, some of you have, I don't know, in Marin, are there limits on 250 in some places and 500? What do you have? Okay, plus, yeah. 400, yeah. I had a 250 race in, in once, and, you know, we did, we did pretty well. We just had to call all the time, you know. And we had fun, though. You know, you have to make it fun. I figure out what foods my clients like, to be honest with you. Some like chocolate, um, fruit. I do fruit. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> you have to uh, figure out what makes it fun, you know because you gotta get through it somehow, you know. Um, but with two, 250s, I often ask people to, can you put together four 250s for me, John? Or, hey, Sally, can you put together four 250s for me? You know, geez, I gotta get 20,000 here. Geez, I gotta get 50,000, you know? <laughs> and then they'll say, okay, I can do that, you know? And we're having a party at, you know, with the Rotary here, and they're really into Rotary or something. Geez, we're having a party at, you know, um, Sue's house. And they, you know, friends with Sue, you know. Um, so, um, and the same goes with small and for large. You can't assume that all of the contributions will be at the maximum. And nor do you want them to be candidly. I mean, um, you want a, a donor base that reflects the breadth and depth of your coalition, you know. Um, so that's really it, um, and that's kind of a really quick summation. Um, does anyone have any questions before we go into a little role play? Budget. I'm sorry? Budget. Budget, yeah. What should one think of as an appropriate budget given the number of voters in your community? <coughs> Well, that is a really, that's a big question. I think you have to look at the other candidates in the past. So in my campaign, which is San Anselmo, used to be a lot less, but it is what it is now. It's about, you know, it's really a minimum of $15,000. I, I do look in conjunction with the campaign consultant. We look at um, past uh, budgets of, we look at what the expenditure was and the filings of other past consultants. <laughs> And we look at, um, and then we look at the uh, how much. In, like for example, I'll look at well, geez, you know, has the voter, has the on, um, has the reg voter registration increased substantially since that race, or you know, how much more people do we need to reach, or is this candidate a total unknown? You know, is this candidate an elected official? You know, uh, so do I have? you know, name identification to overcome, or lack thereof. Do you know, do you see what I'm saying? So. How many voters? 
No, I'm sorry, not focus. Do you have any considering the groundwork prior, you know, if you haven't declared yet, how can you lay the groundwork for asks later on? If you haven't laid the groundwork yet, well, well, how I start usually, maybe and I can begin there, is I just said, do you have a, do you have a holiday card list? And I, I ask the client to assign a dollar value to each person's name. So if I had a $250 limit, I'd say put a, a dollar value next to everybody's name. Ideally, you know, there's a lot of 250s in there, right? And then um, I'd send out an introductory campaign email saying I'm running for office and I need the benefit of your support and investment. Um, and I'm asking people to give at or near the maximum of $250. If you can give 250, 150, 150, whatever you can give today would mean the world to me. So that's how I'd start off. And then I'd follow it up with phone calls. And um, hopefully you have a very healthy list. I'd have you dump out your phone into an Excel spreadsheet, right? And because um, a lot of people live in their phone these <coughs> days. And, um, and I can know about like endorsement as a road to future And then I'd look at your endorsement list if you already have an endorsement list. And I'd say, has every one of these people given you money? And a lot of people say, no. You know, and I say, why not, you know? So, or they come back from an endorsement meeting and they say, oh, they endorsed. And I said, did you ask them for money? You know, and they say, oh, I forgot, you know? <laughs> so, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Any other questions about, maybe some individual races that are, that anyone's, has questions about or county or does the county here have a limit like a county soup or a county okay that's nice um, I would just say that if somebody wants to be a stealth endorser they can pay $99 mm -hmm. if they don't want anyone to know they gave Mm -hmm. I see those though. Yeah. I see those online. I don't think it's very stealth. Well, you, have, you don't no, have to release their names. I've seen them now. I don't know why I saw one of those recently and I thought, oh, that's interesting. But maybe I'm wrong, but I've seen those before. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about limits? Uh huh. Let's say Nevada is 400. Is that just individuals? or organization as well? Uh, it depends on the municipality. For example, in um, San Francisco, businesses are not allowed to give, LLCs are allowed to give. Uh, so they kind of s splice the type of organization or business that's allowed to give. Um, in the state of California, um, Assembly and Senate, you, if a, a business is allowed to give. Um, in the city of Oakland, a business is allowed to give. You know, I don't know. So it's really dictated by the uh, municipality, you know, the city. Um, so I couldn't speak to, you know, Nevada without with certainty. You could probably look it up on your elections site. Mm -hmm. You could probably get a good guess by just looking at, you know, who gives to the other city council members. This is what you're, you know, or if it's um, soup or something like this, or board of ed, or you know, something. So, who has a cell phone wants to come up and do a little uh, role play with me? Okay. Here, why? Why? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Please. No, I uh, should raise your hand oh, first. Okay, I don't have oh no, I do have to raise your hand. No, Elise is a Elise is seasoned. Yeah, have to. What Maggie? Is that it? Yeah. Maggie. Okay. Marty, well, I don't know Maggie. Marty, I know Elise. Marty's Marty. Marty. really good. I call Marty. Her. <laughs> okay, good. I just can't I see you raise your hand. You need my cell phone? Yeah, yeah. I got mine. You got yours. Yeah, about five or ten more minutes. Okay. I love role plays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So.
So <laughs> you hold the microphone, okay? Sure. And what we're going to do is um, usually I do one where I'm the donor and you're the fundraiser. Okay, so you're running for, let's say you're running for San Rafael City Council. Well, I actually am running for office. Could I raise money for my own race? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can put it to give to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yeah, what are you running yeah, for? I'm running for Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District Board. All right. Okay, Las Galinas. Um, now, I'm going to be the donor. Okay. Okay. So, um, why don't you call me and I will be like, you know, I'll just be a businessman. I'll be a member of the chamber. Well, can we put you in my ideological circle? I would. I'm not yeah, at the you point choose, where I'm. You great, great. Okay, who am I going to be? Who are you? No. Um, yeah, you're going to be um, a. Well, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you said you wanted yeah. you want me to be in your ideological sure. circle. Sure. So who would that? Sure. Be? You are a member of the Sierra Club okay. in our San Rafael, and so you, you want me to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can do a hard one. Okay. Why don't um, we make me a member of the Teamsters? I don't. It, sure. I, I wouldn't be. Honestly, I, I prioritize my calls, so I wouldn't be calling the Teamsters for the sanitary district. You should call everybody. You should call everybody. And that's another thing is that, like, um, that's another layer of fundraising. It's like. A, if you see that your opponent got money from somebody, mm -hmm. you should call them. Okay, so my my opponent got yeah, money from the Teamsters? <laughs> okay, I can do that. I can do that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Take down the phone, though. Yeah, so okay. just mental note. Great. If your opponent got money from the Teamsters and you think you're yep. the lead candidate, you believe okay. that. I'm ready. You should call them. I'm ready. This is kind of <laughs> Hi, I'm trying to reach Annie. Yes. This is Annie with Teamsters Joint Council Seven. Hi, Annie. My name is Marty Glickman. I'm running for Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District this November. Hi, Marty. How are you? I'm great. Great. Um, I'm calling because I would like your support in my race. I am running in the fall. I have a lot of great endorsements. I have um, been knocking on doors in my district. It looks like I'm poised to win, and I saw that you were interested in my opponent's race. Um, well, First of all, uh, when's, the, when's the selection? The election is on November 5th. November 5th, 2013? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, well, uh, how much money have you raised so far, Marty? Um, so far, I've raised $13,528 for my race. <laughs> okay, and how much has your opponent raised? Um, my opponent has raised about $8,000. Okay, good for you. And um, so, well, who's endorsing you? Who's supporting you? Um, well, so far I have the endorsements of two San Rafael City Council members, four of the five Marin Wood CSD members, um, uh, two San Rafael School District members, and um, one Dixie School District member, and several members of homeowners associations and unincorporated San Rafael. Good. Uh, do you have anybody in the labor family supporting you? Um, well, I'd like you to be the first person because oh, I am. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, I know I that you've been. That out loud. That was okay, we're back to the role play. Well, I, I'm calling because you are a very important member of our community, and I would like. I know that you are interested in this race because you've been supporting my opponent, and I really am ahead in a lot of ways. I'm ahead in endorsements. Okay. Okay. I'm ahead in money and I am in head with grassroots um, volunteers on the ground, and I know that you really want to um, make a difference in this race, so I was calling to see if you would help. Well, uh, why don't, I'd love to sit down and have coffee. Great, when would you like to sit down and have coffee? Uh, Um, well, actually, I wouldn't wait that long. I was, you know, you seem interested. Um, are you interested in sitting down with me soon? The, the yeah, election is only 76 yeah, days away. Um, I think mornings are good for me. Great. Are you available a morning this week or next week? Yes. 
on Monday, name the date. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. This is really important okay. to me to have a union leader like okay. you being the first to support me because I'm going to win the election. Okay, Monday sounds good. Great. And before you go, I would like, you know, I'd like to talk more about this, but you seem interested in the race. Would you be willing to make a contribution of $250 to my campaign? Why don't you send me a letter, Marty? How do you like the letter? Email? Fax? Okay. Delivered? Just email her a letter. Or email her a letter. <laughs> Just e tell her you're going to email the letter. <laughs> I will email you the letter. Okay, thank you. And you're I'll welcome. see you at coffee. Okay, so click on. Okay. So I think that was good. Thank you. Um, and I think a lot of times, um, I, I think first of all, I think you, it's good that you outraged your opponent. Kudos, yay! So um, I think it's good, um, and I think um, so. You have some fundraising deadlines coming up because your the next election is because your election's in November, right? Yeah. So you have like a September thirtieth fundraising deadline probably or something like that. September twenty first, right? Well, I, actually, I'm not raising my opponent, so I'm not really focusing on the deadlines right now. No, just I to be real about it. Well, you can. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 So figure out the next fundraising okay. deadline and plan some events for the next fundraising mm -hmm. deadline, okay? Because you want to make sure that you're still ahead by a larger margin, okay? Because $5,000 is a good margin, but people will be want to make sure that they want to see that you're hit by a larger margin. And I think institutional support, like, you know, kind of, you know, institutional support that maybe people can offer, like labor or something like mm -hmm. that, or, you know, education communities and stuff like that. They'll be looking for that support. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it comes in at the last minute. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I think it would be really good if you called a lot of them and had an event that they could come to because they like it. Mm -hmm. you know, and made sure that it was kind of showed a broad coalition mm -hmm. support, you know, and so it had all these names on it. We're, we're from different communities within, you know, the county. So I think you're on the right track. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's all about follow up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Who else is running for office? Okay, it's going to have to cut it. Okay. Why don't we do this last one? I'm just okay. Kind of Doug Kelly. Okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I meant it's Doug Kelly. Kind of cut it short. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. What county are you from? Marin. Okay, I mean an island. Oh, a county you have eight. Nice, nice. Okay, so you're running for San Anselmo. Right. City council. Town council. Town council re-election. No. No. Oh. Okay. And um, so, when is the election? November fifth. This year. Oh yeah. Okay. We're all okay. So why don't you uh, call me? Call okay. someone maybe that you want a donation from. Yeah. Could be a business person. Could be a person, and, and I'll tell you. I'll play. Annie. Annie. Uh, Doug Kelly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much. Sorry to bother you at dinner, but um, I'm calling about the San Samuel Town Council race this November. Oh great, great! I didn't know there was an election. Uh, really? <laughs> well, there is, and I'm a candidate. And I'm really looking for your vote. Uh, unfortunately, these races cost a lot of money these days. I need to get my message out. And you know, you and I agree on so many things about town. How we want to keep it a small town, how we need to improve our roads. And I really would like to get my message out, and I'd like to ask two things. I'd like to ask if you'd be willing to put, uh, allow me to put your name down as an endorser, and uh, willing to uh, donate to my campaign to help me get my message out to the rest of town. Well, there's two candidates running, both great people, um, neither of which have really spent much time in volunteerism to the town. As you know, I've spent uh, eight years as chair of Park and Rec and done a lot of other things in town, put in about 600 or more hours in service to my community. And uh, I think in that time, I've learned how to be a leader in this town. I've understood the issues. Uh, I know the uh, topics. And I think I'm by far the most qualified. Uh -huh. What do you do for a living, Doug? I'm a business owner. Uh -huh. I sell computers to uh, restaurants and uh, retail, including McGinnis Park, uh, one of my clients, and lots of clients here in San Selma. Oh, great. Do you, do you have family? Do your kids live? 
I have, uh, I'm raising four boys with my former wife. Uh, they've gone through the public school system. Uh -huh. One's at Drake, one just graduated, and one's in Reno. Well, you know what? I was actually planning on having one at your house. <laughs> so yes, I was planning that. I was going to get to that after the donation. Well, geez, you know, I'm redoing my kitchen. Okay, fine. Um, that's great. Maybe you could help me uh, arrange one somewhere in your neighborhood. I'm happy to, you know, give you some names or something. That would be really great. I'd love to do that. And, um, Let me just get your email correctly, because I'm not sure I have your newest one. See, this is beautiful. People change their emails like every five minutes. So I always insist that people say, and what is the best email for you? So high five then, Kelly. <laughs> okay, I love that. I love that. So that is really, um, you know, we couldn't, that was a great phone call. Um, and I think it actually forces people to kind of ask the questions that many people ask, like, kind of, well, who are you? What do you do? And then also, um, it, you really made me think, uh, you are the one who called me, and the other two people that are running, that are running, they may not call me, so they may not get, you know, my support. And that really reinforces the fundamental that it's all about calling and personal contact. So um, it's all about call time. So go forth and call people. That's all I have to say tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Annie. Uh, next, uh, Lisa Stanley from Green Dog Campaigns is going to talk about maximizing your web presence. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, I thought that went really well. What Annie did, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, it was really good. So I'm going to kind of take, uh, make this a little bit more interactive too, because I think that works best. We're a little bit, we're running a little bit slow. I want to keep you awake, so I want to ask you questions. So again, I want the people who are running for the first time, not you seasoned old veterans, to identify yourselves. And I want to know your names. Of course, I know Doug, and I know Marnie, and I've just met Barbara. Who else is running for the first time? I haven't run in 20 years. Does that count? It Well, maybe sure. because things change. You know, <laughs> things change. So what's your name? Uh, Brady Peterson. Brady, nice to meet you. Okay, and back there. Maya, too. I'm running for Cormier and Lex for school board. And what's your first name? Maya. Maya, nice to meet you. And yeah, Brady. Okay, so, Anne, get over here. Randy Warren. Randy Warren, nice to meet you. David Kuhn, I'm running for town council in Puerto Rico. Great, David. Nice to meet you. Great. Miguel Garza, running for Nevada School Board. Okay, great. Now, I'm not really good at names. I do teach at Dominican, but sometimes, so help me out. I may just point to you and say blue shirt or something like that. But anyway, this is really exciting. Um, you guys are, are in for the adventure of your life. And win or lose, I don't think you'll have any regrets because there's something about people who stick their neck out in the public area and they stick it out with the best intentions. Whether they win or they lose, they're proud of themselves for doing it. They learn something every step of the way. Okay, so here's a little test. What is the job? What do you think the job? You newbies, not you seasoned people. You newbies, what is the primary job? of a website. Anyone? You do. <clears throat> to get the message out. To get the message out. Okay. That's good. What's another job for a website? Provide verification um, facts and who you are. Okay. Facts. Touch okay. Points. Good. Doug? To have a donation link. <laughs> to have a donation link. Absolutely. But would you put that as number one? Uh, right I now I would, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, great. No, it's just, it's one. How about you? Uh, to have an endorsement link. Uh huh. To have an endorsement link, yeah. To great. persuade. To persuade. To be taken seriously. To be taken seriously. Anybody else? Yeah, this is a great group. Okay. So the name recognition and creating an ocular impression of the name on the brain of the reader. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so I like to talk in little bits, little nuggets of wisdom that come from my 30 years or 27 plus years of working on a political image. Images.